Christmas is over, but the holiday shopping rush is not. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kagan Harsha. Adrian is off this week. Shoppers were out in full force across the city today. News Channel 9's Anusha Rasta is live at Cielo Vista Mall tonight to tell us why. Anusha? Kagan, that's right. Now, the biggest holiday shopping season of the year is almost over, but retailers are still trying to get people to shop by offering them very hot deals. Now, some retail analysts say consumers were in a very good shopping mood at the beginning of this holiday season, but after Hurricane Sandy and tension over the fiscal cliff, consumers began holding back. Other experts say it's just too early to tell whether holiday sales will increase or decrease in comparison to last year. Research firm Shopper Track estimates sales will go down by 1% compared to last year, but the International Council of Shopping Centers predicts holiday sales at chain stores will rise 3% this year. Now here at Cielo Vista Mall, foot traffic was heavy, but shoppers we spoke to said they weren't in a hurry to buy. Others said they did their Christmas shopping early this year. Right now, um, we're just looking at sales and clearances. Did I spend uh, all of my money I had been saving for Christmas presents on Black Friday? It was bad. Many mall shoppers told us they came to return Christmas gifts they didn't like. Now, analysts say that the increase in online shopping is another reason for why less people are spending their money in stores. Reporting live at Cielo Vista Mall, Anusha Rasta, News Channel 9. Now remember, Anusha, you're working tonight. You're not out shopping, okay? Yes, I may, I may <laughs> have to just go in and snag a few of those deals, Kagan. I Maybe I'll bring you something back. I'll bring you back an action figure. All right. How about that? You have permission <laughs> to shop. Thanks, Anusha. All right. Thank you very much. Very much. Well, not so festive numbers out today on holiday retail sales. That story was topping our latest business news. According to Spender Tracker, MasterCard advisors spend plus sales were up just seven tenths of a percent this year. That's the weakest increase in four years. Analysts blame disrupting storms and economic uncertainty for the lagging sales numbers. Several people flying into El Paso arrived late today. There's severe storms across parts of the country and our state, making travel a challenge for many. Locally, however, there weren't any cancellations and just a few delays. Yeah, smooth. Smooth sailing. I think that it looks like things are pretty orderly, a little hectic, but, you know, 6 out of 10, not too bad. El Paso International does offer some advice to avoid some hassles. Arrive early enough to allow time to check in. For quicker parking, there's reserved parking available, and you can do that online. And also make sure that you check with your airline for any flight changes or delays. El Paso police have arrested 11 people for driving drunk this holiday. Six of those arrests were made Christmas Eve, the other five on Christmas Day. Three of the suspects were repeat offenders. Police also say that one of those suspects was driving 95 miles an hour in a 65 mile an hour zone on I-10. Police will be out in full force the rest of this holiday week and they're reminding everyone not to drink and drive. El Paso police are investigating a three vehicle crash in East El Paso that happened early this morning. It happened around 3 o'clock on Lee Trevino and Gateway West. According to emergency responders, traffic in that area was impacted for some time because the vehicles involved were blocking traffic. We know that several injuries were reported, but apparently all were minor. No one was taken to the hospital. No word yet on the cause of the crash, but the accident and that accident scene is now clear. Let's take a look at traffic at this hour. If you're headed out, I-10 at Yarbrough, not much in the way of cars. A lot of people have the day off. I-10 at Sunland Park, also looking pretty smooth tonight. Well, it's official. The Hyundai Sun Bowl week started this afternoon with the arrivals of both teams from USC and Georgia Tech. News Channel Lions' Fred Albers is here tonight to talk about these welcoming committees, and there's quite the sight out at the airport, Fred. Uh, absolutely, Kate. And it's always fun for me, but it's more fun for the players and coaches getting to experience El Paso for the very first time. It's exciting to watch the players' faces and get their reaction to El Paso. Remember, the kids are shocked looking out the airplane windows at our desert landscape. And then some are hearing mariachis for the very first time. Of course, it's not just the players who are surprised. Coaches get to wear the traditional sombrero. Is that the first time you wore a sombrero? That is, I believe. How did it feel? Heavy. <laughs> a little out of balance. i got to get used to it. And then uh, what do you think of uh, your players' uh, dance moves? Yeah, we, we need a little work. I don't think that they're used to that music, so by the end of the week we'll have it down. Today was nothing. Wait until the two-stepping begins 
later in the week. Okay, and coming up a little bit later in sports, we're going to hear from Georgia Tech coach Paul Johnson. Also go out to Southern Cal's very first practice of the week. That's coming up a little bit later in sports. I was looking for you dancing, Fred. Didn't see you. I'm two step in my way. All right. We'll see you in a bit. Thousands of people are spending this day after Christmas in the dark. Power outages are a major side effect of those massive winter storms, and that severe storm system is plowing across the United States. Today, snow is piling up from Ohio to the northeast, and already the storm's responsible for at least three deaths. Elizabeth Corden takes a look at where the storm's been, where it is now, and where it's headed next. The sound of jingle bells now replaced by the scraping of plows on pavement. Tires trudging through snow and whipping winds. Blizzard and winter storm warnings are posted for a wide swath of the United States. Right along where kind of that rain snow line, that's where the front is. And just north of that, that's usually where the axis of the heaviest snow will be. So it's called the snow sweet spot. And we're going to see that from Cincinnati, just north of that, through Indianapolis, Cleveland, and into Buffalo. All part of the deadly system that erupted Christmas Day, temporarily shutting down a highway in Oklahoma, destroying property in Texas, and breaking the holiday snowfall record in Arkansas. The system spawned multiple tornadoes, including this one in Alabama. Oh my God, look, that's a tornado. Oh wow. Oh Jesus, look at that tornado. With daylight Wednesday came the reality of just how much damage was done. At this Mobile High School, portable classrooms are in ruins, windows are missing, and roof tiles are shattered. Just one of the many structural casualties of this massive storm. Judging from some of the damage we've witnessed today, it's a miracle uh, that, that no one was hurt any worse than they were. Post-holiday travel plans are also taking a beating. Roads are a mess, many airports no better, meaning people could be spending longer than expected at their holiday destinations. I'm Elizabeth Corden reporting. Meanwhile, closer to home, the weather outside is cool, but it sounds like it's about to get even colder. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chuck DeBroder for a first look at our forecast. Chuck? Yeah, we have another cold front on the way. Of course, we had a weak one last night and the night before, a Pacific system and upper wave. Now, here's last night's front. It's kind of stalled out on the Arizona-New Mexico border. Here's the next upper wave. It will switch the winds tonight out of the southwest. That should bump up our temperatures a few degrees from today's high. We uh, made it to 50 in Las Cruces, 53 in El Paso. And tomorrow, as I mentioned, a few degree bump before we drop again. Look at all the snow to the west around another system. But here's the cold front. There's the upper wave. We'll talk about the impact and a New Year's Eve storm, all in your full forecast. All right, thanks, Chuck. An elderly El Paso man is missing tonight, and police believe his life may be in danger. Ramon Merez was last seen at around 1 p.m. on Monday. A caretaker called police this morning after realizing that the 81-year-old had vanished from his home on Canal Street. Merez is 5 foot 4 inches tall, weighs about 160 pounds, and he was last seen wearing a camel jacket, blue jeans, and a Korean cap. If you've seen him, please call police. A man was arrested after a Christmas morning burglary of a vehicle in northeast El Paso. Police say 20-year-old Joseph Julian Luis Valleres stole speakers, an amplifier, and a stereo from a car at the 5500 block of Corsicana yesterday morning. Valleres was arrested and booked into the El Paso County Detention Facility. The property that was removed from that car has since been recovered. The gifts are open, the tinsel is down, and it's time to put away the decorations for another year. But what about the Christmas tree? I'll tell you how you can dispose of your tree the environmentally sound way up next. Plus, fireworks sales are underway in Las Cruces for the new year. What to expect? Details.